at the forefront of your mind every single time that yep. conversation comes yep. up. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you graduating college? What's your degree? What's your job lined up? What's this XYZ path that everybody else is following in the fucking rat race? All right. these sheep in America that everybody's following because that's what you're supposed to do because they fell for the parental and societal pressures yeah. that are put on you through just living in this country. Most of it, in my opinion, and I say this as a white male in, in a privileged society, is, is not due to the system. Most of it's due to the psychological warfare going on inside your own brain that's, that was put there through other people. When the 1% is not addressing you about these situations, you need to take it all with a grain of salt because how often are those same people gonna come up to you and say, does that make you happy? Never. And if they're not gonna give a fuck about you being happy and they're gonna give a fuck about a job with benefits and a fat paycheck why the fuck are you gonna listen to them but yeah, like yeah, it's the truth if they're not coming from a place of happiness and fulfillment why the fuck does their opinion matter anyways they're coming from a place of oh i, I, I have an audi now because i got a job oh really you hate 95 percent of your life besides when you golf on the weekends with the boys and get drunk you have to keep that in front of your mind it's gonna feel judgmental and it is kind of putting yourself on a pedestal but it's because you are on that pedestal. You're coming from a place of happiness and fulfillment. The quality of your life is better. There's a hierarchy there, right? So there's hierarchies here. Maybe he makes a lot more money than you. If he's not happier than you, then you gotta decide whose opinions matter and whose doesn't. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Conscious Cast. I'm your host, Cal, along with my other boy, Mr. Jason Scalora. So yes, this is our second take, all right? And it's been over a week. Third take. Third take, and it's been over a week since we've been in here, and nothing has changed. We just keep cracking up when we just make some stupid joke, it's and it just so leads funny. to this. I wish it. Uh, I think from from now on we should try to, or maybe I don't know, whatever. Get some fo footage to keep to show them how much time we have spent just literally yeah. sitting here trying to continue oh. our conversation, but just can't stop laughing. I don't know what it is. The, I mean, feel, the feeling to, d to describe it as oh. is like when you're younger in like middle school and in class and your teacher's like, stop laughing. And you and your friend are just like, <laughs> you can't st like it, the moment where you're yeah. not supposed to be laughing yeah. and you have the urge to just laugh extra hard. Oh, that's dude. how it feels. Those are just, some of the funniest moments though. But oh it, my it just God. never goes away. It's the best. Oh my God. I so, oh God. The best. But uh, yeah, so it's been over a week since we've been in here. I just got back from Montana. Worst traveling experience of my life. Okay, but Montana was great. Saw some great wildlife. Saw some great people. Really got outside my comfort zone. And I traveled pretty much all the way across the country. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was a great experience. Realized I don't want to live in Montana. But um, mm. I like I like that type of environment. Maybe in the future, you know, you never know. So with all that being said, let's get right into this bad boy. So my man Jason Scalora opened this thing up. So, where I started this, all right, let's try that again. So, this was, I think, like a week ago, give or take, you're in Montana, and then one of your TikToks came up on my For You page, and, Damn straight. hell yeah, baby, I'm fucking like, oh. <laughs> your chest has some velocity to it, you're like, yeah, oh my god, look at that, hey, <laughs> relax, dude, dude, dude. chill, chill on, okay. and, so you're in Montana, and one of your TikToks came up on my For You page, and then I was looking <clears> at it, and I was, it made me think about the fact that there have been some things I wanted to ask you about, poke and prod about, and and things of your benefit, really not to my benefit at all, yep, just yep. like to just help you kind of Thank have you. some more self-awareness of what's going on in your own life. But I never wanted to ask you because I know that these questions are going to make you feel uncomfortable, and they're going to make you like feel uncomfortable like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like that's about it mm -hmm. um very similar to like when that's we talk real friends do yeah but that's very similar to when we were talking about the whole 4.0 gpa thing right yeah. why do you want to keep it 4.0 right or whatever um but essentially <clears throat> i had been avoiding it I, I wasn't beating around the bush i wasn't even acknowledging the bush was there i was kind of like leaving it but i know that these questions are something that i i would de deeply regret not asking you and just helping you try and at least figure out whatever it is that <laughs> Why did I do that, dude? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> oh, I'm such a deaf shit, dude. Oh. Anyways, anyways, I feel like we're always on the edge, and like any so sort stupid. of any so stupid, I just go. <laughs> <laughs> just like what? <laughs> <laughs> Conscious cast special. Uh, we should literally just have a comedy podcast. Dude, stuff. we really should, man. <laughs> the unconscious cast. <laughs> All we, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's pretty cast. good. It's pretty good. We could have some episodes like that. Yeah, we really could. We really could. 
Unconscious Unco- season one. Season one. one episode. We should do seasons, dude. That's pretty we cool. could, yeah. Ooh, I like that. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Me like you. You got to cut that out. Was that like culture appropriation? Yes. Dude, sorry. All right. Anyways, I don't like that look <laughs> in your eyes. <laughs> yeah, we just know. You just know. Right, we're good. Every time you say we're good, we're not good. <laughs> Houston, we got no problems. And like the bottom half of the fucking <laughs> rocket ship's like falling off. <laughs> Houston, we're all right. Everyone up here is all good. <laughs> just, <gasps> 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 oh, you guys are right up there? Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. It's all good. It's okay. Fuck, oh, that's man. a really good analogy. Damn. Thanks, bro. I mean... It's what I do. I'm really intellectually. <laughs> I'm kind of a life coach. <laughs> I mean, sh- <laughs> is that how you talk to your clients? Yeah, I'm just like, hey, yo. <laughs> but I wanted to ask you about like where you want to take all the shit. Yeah. Right. Because here's the thing: is like there's a certain extent to where like you know, you like you know <laughs> what the steps necessary to take to get to where it is you want to go but i feel like you're not defi- <laughs> hey yo this is this is the hardest thing i've ever tried to do in my life yo you don't even know i'm i'm trying to talk and you, that's you, how you gotta do it you just keep you just keep doing this so maybe i have to acknowledge that this Como se dice, taking your TikTok. <laughs> All right. It's, it's, still, good. it's good. still in the air. I yeah, just, yeah. You, you feel it in your chest. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. And eventually, and even when, <laughs> even when you try and like, like, oh, dis- like kind of dissipate away dude. from the laughter, you still feel it's so it. so stupid. It's so weird. I blame the viewers. <laughs> People probably think we're high. <laughs> probably. No, I've never smoked in my life. Yeah. I'm, I'm high right now. <laughs> Natural high. High on life. I wanted to ask you some questions because I, was, I wasn't beating around the bush. I wasn't even acknowledging but the bush was there. And when I saw your TikTok on my For You page, I noticed like, you know that there are certain things and certain steps you need to take toward to get to whatever goals they are that you have, but you haven't identified the goal that you want to have. <laughs> Maybe this is a good. Maybe this laughter is a good way for you to deal with the discomfort. Anyways, no, I know what you're saying though. 100%. But because I think for me personally, the fact that I'm just so confused on like where you're actually going with this <laughs> yeah, yeah. is what's is is what's throwing me off, right? Uh, but the thing is, is you're working your ass off. Mm-hmm. You're working your fucking ass off. You spend so much time editing and editing well, and money spent on this camera and. This camera and the stand. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you use that fucking stupid Canon EOS? D- Why does it count in EOS? SL2. Sorry. And so I was thinking, A, like, th- I haven't really fully organized my thoughts. All I know is that I want to poke and prod a bit, right? Yeah. I think first thing, th- so imagine you're shooting a bow and arrow, right? And it's with your, the, the bow and arrow is your content, mm-hmm. the editing process, the money you're spending on the camera. It's like, it's the grind, right? But you don't have a fucking target. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, do you want to pursue being an editor, mm-hmm. right? Do you want to be like, like the the I mean the highest? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, no, I agree. But like, no. like um, Jamie on the Joe Rogan podcast or D Rock, the the Gary V's D Rock. Like those are like the most well known yeah. like editors, right? Um, people that and they're fucking amazing with the content. And they're great. Like that's their that's their fucking shit. You know. Or do you want to be the Gary V or the Joe Rogan? Like, do you want to be mm. the face of the podcast? Do you want to be the editor? And I'm not saying that that means you need to change what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But what I am saying is once you identify what whatever that goal is, then you're going to know what steps you need to take in order to get you to where you want to go. Mm. Right? Because yeah. how are you going to – like for me personally, I'm my content and all the things that I'm doing – are around my aims, right? And I, but I know what those targets are. Yeah. I'm, I'm a life coach. I'm, I want to do seminars where I'm on stage talking to large groups of people, and I want to do content creation to make the world a better place because I want to have an influence on people. And the number one way, one way to influence people is through social media. 
right? And so that I want to change the world in that aspect. And then in the super, super end goal, like the target and the way back, right? And that this is going to take my whole lifetime and I'll probably die in the process of trying to change is changing the educate, changing the education system and how it's run, right? And so everything I do, that's in my subconscious mind. Everything I do, every content that I clip up, whether it's me or not, every podcast that I film, everything I do has those goals in mind, right? And everything I do is helping me get towards that goal. And it's all funneling towards the same thing, right? And things that I do, whether or not I'm consciously aware of it or not, are going to be changed. The habits of my life are going to change. The way I edit videos, the everything that, like <clears throat> everything is changed so that it's aligning me with that goal, with the, those targets, right? And I think, A, you need to identify what that is, but B, then align with that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because <clears throat> if you want to be the, the D-Rock, right, to Gary Vee or the Joe Rogan and host your own podcast, you got to figure that out, right? And I think internally, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what it is that you want to do, but I think internally it wouldn't take you too long to figure that out, mm. especially with somebody who's as self-aware as you are, right? Yeah. Um, I've been talking a lot. What do you, what are your thoughts? Yeah. So <laughs> let me tell you like what, what I've been saying to people. They're like, well, like, so they ask me like, oh, what are you majoring in? Right. And so I say philosophy and they're like, <laughs> the fuck are you gonna do with a philosophy degree like and yeah. then and then i are they like oh you want to be a teacher do you want to go to law school and i say no and they're like okay <laughs> now what path and that's so what i've been telling people is like i want to work for a nonprofit, right mm -hmm. and um whether that be animal rights environmental um <clears throat> that's what i've been telling them but um and then i and then i say uh you know obviously working in a nonprofit, you're not, not gonna make a lot of money right so to counter that and to like to get the money um i'd be doing videography and like filmmaking and like you know the like or whatever that okay. would be my main source of income um and so that's what i've been telling people but when i say like the nonprofit, like i know i know this will always be a part of my life right like i always know content creation uh videography like all this different type of stuff and like yes i need i need a more defined goal in video videography i agree 100 percent. that's like mm -hmm. that is a definite for sure and something I, i'm not too sure about just yet um at least in my opinion and maybe we can figure that out today you never know mm -hmm. um then the, when i say the nonprofit, like i don't know like I really like I don't I don't have as much passion for that, you know? Like I obviously have a big passion for veganism. I have a big passion for all these different like environmentalism, you know. Um mm -hmm. not necessarily like I don't I'm not as well rounded in like environmentalism as I am in veganism, um and just like animal rights in general. Um and do I want to see a change in that? Absolutely. Do I wanna be an advocate for that maybe i don't know you know like i don't know if i like when not, i not in the sense where typical people because obviously you're an advocate for it just yeah, by yeah, like when i'm when, like like know, working, I working for PETA or something like that yeah like, I, I don't know if i want like when i say like working for a nonprofit, and they're like oh i'm just like wow that, like that makes it more acceptable and that's why i think i say it you know mm -hmm. what i mean and so, so you're saying it to avoid the discomfort involved with the reality of, I don't know. Partially, yes, I believe so. I think that's part of it, too, because, like, when people say, like, oh, you're getting a degree that's pointless, like, no one likes to hear that, right? Yeah. Like, and, of course, like, I understand I only give value to those people's opinions. Um, it Like, I have to, I have to give value to those people's opinions, right, and, and for it to matter in my life. But there is some truth in that. Like, we mm -hmm. talked about in the capitalism episode, there's not a lot of philosophy majors getting jobs as, like, I guess you could say a philosophy teacher mm -hmm. or, you know. But here's whatever. the thing that you need to remember. Right, and I'm not saying this to blow smoke up your ass, no, you're good. <clears throat> but you, but you, you know this, you feel this, right? When you walk around, the, for example, when you walk around campus and you walk and and you could talk to any random person, how often are you talking to somebody that's as disciplined as you? Yeah, probably not. How, like how often? One in a hundred? One in a thousand? It's probably close to one in a thousand of people that are as disciplined as you are. Yeah. Like not blowing smoke up your ass, right? So that's that's a already like insane because you combine that with the fact that you're not an actual idiot like your iq is not like like just i mean looking at the statistics on people who are successful in, in monetary terms your iq is fine i don't know what your iq is but you're not an idiot and your level of discipline is insane compared to the the 99 it's ridiculous you're definitely top one percent for sure right so those two things alone should give you the faith to know that the money thing is not going to be an issue for you Gotcha. It won't. Mm. But what's going to be the issue for you is fulfillment mm. because fulfillment has nothing to do with discipline. Well, that's not true, but it has much less to do with discipline yeah. and more to do with self-awareness mm. Okay, and being real with yourself, right? Okay. And so the reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of times when you get into these conversations with people, it's going to be very, very hard for you to break the pattern of saying, 
I want to work for a nonprofit. I want to do X, Y, Z yep. so mm-hmm. that you can put up this wall a, yep. or this mask rather of this is what I'm going to do. Don't poke and prod at something that's soft and, 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 and gushy yep. on the yep. inside that's making me mm-hmm. fearful of your judgment of me, yep. right? Because in the long run, and I mean this to you, brother, you'll be fucking fine. You're going to be just yeah, yeah. fine. Like, I know that for a fact, mm-hmm. right? And you I know see. you know that. I appreciate it. And I know you know that. But the more times, the more time you spend not speaking your truth, even if you don't know what it is, the further away you're putting yourself from whatever it is that it is. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The more time you spend, for lack of a better term, lying, mm. Right, because you're not speaking the truth, and you're consciously aware of the dissonance between you and whatever the reality is. Right, you know that maybe you don't know what it actually is that you want to do, whether or not it's working for a nonprofit or whatever. But the more time you spend saying that, the, the more time you spend keeping yourself in a box and the same distance away from whatever reality is, whatever it is. Mm. You don't know what it is, and that's fine. Mm. But you got to keep in mind the fact that your personality and what you're doing and and your level of IQ. Means you're gonna be fine. Like, mm. like yeah. you're gonna be just fine. Yeah, and of course, there's external factors. You know, out of my control. That you know, they're not. Specific, you could, but I get what you you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. And I think, um, I don't know, because like a big thing for me, like like you said, like I really don't know like what I want to do, right? Like I re- like in terms of what I want to do with my life, right? Mm-hmm. Like in terms of like, do I want to do content creation? Do I want to be the face, or do I want to be the person in the background doing the work? This is why I'm saying is. You need. Say it. Hey, no, 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 I'm trying to organize. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. I think that, um, but I appreciate the fact that you're open. Say it. And vulnerable. <laughs> Fuck, you hurt my feelings right now. Do it. I want you to. <laughs> I think what you see need. See this bicep. <laughs> God damn. It. What? I just got a little aggressive. <laughs> Tone it down. Dude, you're... Oh. No, you're good. It's good? Yeah, you're good. Click it? No, you're good. Oh, okay. God, Jason. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Back on course. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that hurts. Oh, oh damn. Shit. Shit. Shit, you have, shit, baby. You need me to. Uh, I've never met somebody fuck. with more empathy than you. I don't think. So. Like, the second I say anything that's like a minor inconvenience, <laughs> like, I notice this with you. Yeah. Anytime I, I catch myself complaining with you. Well, I don't even catch myself. Immediately, I know I'm complaining because you go, oh, fuck. Like, you, damn, really? Which is like a good, like, uh, it's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. it doesn't seem fake, but yeah. it's like the amount of empathy you have is actually, like, it's ridiculous. Damn. God, I'm such a pussy, dude. No. <laughs> no, I know, I know. No, like, for real. You have a ton of empathy. Like, it's, like, immediately, you're mm. like, uh, you put yourself in my shoes, and you're like, damn, that sucks. It must be tough, or what, whatever it is. <clears throat> Just like, to some extent, yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> for sure. Anyways, the thing I, the, the thing I, I think you should, where was I going with this? Because we were talking about... Yeah, like how I really don't know. You don't really know? Okay. I think, personally, you should go with everything you got towards one path and then see if you like it or not. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to be the D-Rock to somebody's Gary V, or you want to be the Gary V, or whatever, or a philosophy teacher, or somebody that's into politics for animal rights, or whatever... I say you just go for it, bro. Yeah. I mm. I but, think for me, like, like if we're, if we're talking about right now, like, what, what would I gravitate towards the most? I think it would be content creation, without a doubt. Like, video editing, content creation, I for agree. sure. And... And what I what I what I've been really getting interested in, in lately, and like looking up and researching, is like video editing, right? I've been I've found like, and I've never really like I've obviously looked up tutorials online, but like video editors that explain like watching the, how they video edit and like overall learn from them and just their process, like in terms of business and uh, like how they edit, how they enter the market as a freelance video editor um, and stuff like that. And I really enjoy video editing. I don't as much enjoy filming. Um, I really enjoy video editing, and I think. I think, yeah, I definitely want to dive into that a lot, too, because it is something inherently that I find um, to be naturally fulfilling, right? right. And, I, and it's and it's in demand now more mm-hmm. than ever. Um, <clears throat> I think for me, it's just really pushing myself yeah. to, one, find that out to be true. Yeah. And, uh, and, and a thing that I find, to because I actually heard this, um, this, is, this is a point that sparked more ideas about it, and it's hard coming from my perspective specifically because – it's a lot easier for me to say this, um, and you'll understand why. But it was Gary V, and he was talking to somebody about um, about business and whatnot. 
and he was talking about a lot of people, whether it's societal pressures or what they think how things should be or whatever, get into this idea where that they think that they need to be the Gary Vee. They think that they need to be the CEO. They think that they need to be the number one, in quotes, yeah, right? Yeah. They need to be the head guy, right? And in reality, they'd be much happier and they'd make more money and they'd live a better life if they were the number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, mm -hmm. right? And in that company, in that organization, yep. right? Whether they're like, so like for, for your example, the, the reason why I bring it up is because I think for somebody like you, you, I don't, I don't, only you know the answer to this, but maybe for someone like you, you might, you might feel happier and more fulfilled and, and make way more money and just overall, like every box is checked off way better if you're the D rock to a Gary V rather yeah. than trying to be Gary V. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe you don't like having the camera on you 24 seven, following you around from waking up till going to bed. But for somebody like me, like me thinking about somebody waking up and being like, this is a day in life of Jason and doing that every single day, 365. I love that. Mm. That I, I that doesn't bother yeah. me. If somebody, if a crowd of people were following me around watching every move, it's not going to bother me. Mm. Obviously, I need alone time. Like I'm not, yeah. not a fucking yeah, alien. Yeah. But like for somebody like me, I, I would love that. Yeah. Like that would be great. I would love mm. to do that. Yeah. And I think that I have the personality for it too. Like warm, bubbly, just mm. like. Yeah, for sure. Give me all the attention. Like mm. I love it. Yeah. But for some for somebody else, they might not like that, right? And the guy behind the camera, like D Rock, maybe he's not the guy that enjoys all the attention, right? Mm. But I think what I'm getting at is you need to really make sure you're being very self aware and honest and truthful with yourself, <clears throat> with that you're not trying to put yourself in the number one box, right? And the, the fact that the, the number one in it of itself, like my ego likes that, right? Because mm. I'm of the course. number one. Mm. I'm the number. Mm. Are you the number one if you're unhappy? No, you're not. <laughs> yeah. And not for nothing, like people like Gary Vee have way more fucking problems than D-Rock does, right? Mm -hmm. And and he takes them on like up front and he and he enjoys it because that's where he feels like he fits, right? And if you're gonna try and bend your personality to try and fit in the number one box rather than to just be who you are and and actualize your potential where your potential lies, you're gonna find yourself being miserable. And but you yeah. already know I know you already know that. Yeah, it's tough, man. Because the situation, like, if I look at my current situation, like, I get what you're saying, and like, let me just address your point real quick. Like, I do like the attention, right? I do like the attention, but I don't think to the same extent as you, right? Like, yeah. so obviously, if we're taking like the example, like you have alone time, whatever. Those are assumptions. Yeah. Like yeah. someone being on you twenty four seven with a camera, like I think that would get to me after a certain point. But for you, you know, like that would. I mean, like, I think I would enjoy it for a short amount of time, yeah. but for a long amount of time, um, probably it would yeah. be better for you. Oh, yeah, and again, this is all gray area. Of course, yeah. of course. Um, and I do like content creation. I do like creating content, sending a message, right, and being the face, right? Mm -hmm. But I also do enjoy being the background person for someone else, right? Mm -hmm. And you see a lot of video editors such as, like, um, I think his name's Mo Saeed for uh, – uh, KSI or whatever like he he's like the editor for KSI right but he yeah. also creates his own content at the same time oh. so it, like, obviously it's possible yeah, right it's not, um, it's, yeah, not, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not this or that right yeah. um, and I think that's something that I would love to do because I could see you doing yeah, it and I, I think I think I love to create I want you to notice something real quick I hate to cut you off notice how you're talking about this versus how you talked about the nonprofit. yeah like th this is what I'm talking about like I'm so much more passionate about this because as compared to a nonprofit, because like I, because I, I really haven't gone into the area of a nonprofit. Like honestly, I really don't give a f <laughs> like. I don't like. I, it's just like, eh, like I guess. Like that's just like that's kind of what I think about. You know, that's what I think about it. If I'm being right, honest, right? But in the, in, and the, for the people watching, there's going to be people that look at what we're doing and how much meaning we have and like the emotion that we're experiencing right now and how much meaning we find in just even this conversation alone yeah, yeah. in the pursuit of what we're doing and be like, eh. in the same way that you look at a nonprofit, yep. like, Meh. yeah. But that's because we're all different, yeah. right? As corny and unique and as corny and cliche as that sounds, everybody's yeah. unique. Everybody has their own shit that they're yeah. going to be drawn toward. Yeah. Some people might look at content creation and be like, meh. You know, like, it's like the same thing. And, I, and then as compared to working in a nonprofit, they'd be like, oh, yes, dude. Like, you know, like, yeah, it's a vice versa. So it's like, it's a subjective thing. Um, and yeah, for me currently in this and like in the situation I'm at, I've always been, I guess you could say since the beginning of college, like I came in undeclared, I really had no idea what I wanted to do, right? Um, I explored different classes and I took a philosophy class. I was like, oh, this is it, right? Like I just I just knew like philosophy would probably be the best thing. But like even when I identified that major and I, I identified the minors or whatever, like I was just like it was never – 
pull, because you get a degree to get something else, right? It's used as a means to an end, right? Mm. It's never it's never used solely yeah. in itself, right? Like you use um like an accounting degree to become an accountant, you know what I mean? Like without without that accounting degree, you really couldn't be an accountant. I mean, unless you're like some type of freelance accountant <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's always used as a means to an end, and I'm just I've just I don't know what my end is, and I think that's there's good. There's some good in that, but there's also a lot of bad, right? Because good in terms of like that flexibility, right? You're not stuck on one path, right? You have options, which I've always liked. But also within that, this comes back into like what I actually saw this on your For You page or my For You page uh, yesterday. It's like you're kind of stuck in a plan B, right? You don't really have a plan A. And so like you're just kind of riding back on this plan B, seeing where it's going. And then your plan A is covered covered over with right. dirt, you know? But here's the thing is, is for me, for example, um, I noticed that, and this is now just me like self-reflecting on it. It was a lot easier for me to burn the boats and just go flat out 100% with life coaching and content creation when I stopped lying to other people saying I wanted to be a dental hygienist. Yeah. Is that making yeah. sense? Yeah. When I stopped telling people I want to be a dental hygienist and me, and I started saying, mm, I don't really know what I want to do. Mm. That's when I. That's when my brain felt all this, like all this weight on my shoulders just gone. And when I was free to explore, mm. that's when I figured out life coaching, content creation, mm. seminars, education system. That's when I figured that shit out. Yeah. And that, and that was because all the masks were off, right? Yep. It wasn't fogging up my vision anymore. Yep. The walls were down. I could see everything clearly, mm-hmm. right? And so when I got to that point, that's when I figured out where I wanted to go. That's yep. when I figured out what my targets were. Yep. Right, and my targets are still moving. Right, mm-hmm. things are going to change. Maybe I won't want to do content creation. Maybe I'll have somebody else doing content creation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I won't want to change the education system. I want to do the political or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like it, it might change, but right now, that's what I hundred percent in my heart resonate with. A hundred percent, that's really the truth. Good. And I think that's something you're very good at too. Just being very authentic in alignment, and then externalizing that. You I'm know? good at it, but it's the same thing as the reason why somebody has a bigger bicep than somebody mm-hmm. else. It's because it's something I've practiced. Because I was in the same boat as 99% of college kids. I, I told people for years, I want to do dental hygiene. I don't give a fuck about dental <laughs> hygiene. I said it because I was scared. Because yeah, I didn't yeah. know what the fuck I wanted yeah. to do. But when I figured out what I wanted to do is when I stopped lying to other people. Mm-hmm. So then I could stop lying to myself. So then I could free up all this mental energy to say, fuck it. There's nothing that I actually am attached to, which is yeah. the dental hygiene. And I'll take the dental hygiene classes and do whatever. Yeah. And it was just, there's no attachment to anything else. So I can just free roam and figure out whatever the fuck it is I want to do. Yeah. Because I'm not lying to other people and trying to put barricades on myself. And my ego is just all fucking fogging everything up. Like, mm-hmm. it's clear. It's as clear as I can get. Yep. And so when that happened, God, the universe, bless me with the opportunities to figure out whatever it is that I wanted to do. Whatever it is that my targets were, mm-hmm. right? And they came to me as a result of me letting go of the the mask that I was putting up to other people. So I would suggest for somebody like you that the number one tangible, understood, like, this is what I need to do step is to stop telling people you want to do the... Um, yeah, nonprofit. Nonprofit. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. And I think, too, um, yeah, that's definitely something I got to definitely do. And also, it's like... Going back to like how, how how like I feel so much more passionate about video editing, right, and um, the like, you know, maybe because I have more experience in that area and the, whatever, and I don't really have a solid foundation in the nonprofit or whatever. Um, I just like I I just think that difference in passion, right, um, for a lot of individuals, especially for myself, sometimes like when I'm talking to maybe someone I'm at work, right, and a customer comes up to me and they're like, "Oh, Cal, uh, what?" what you going to school? You graduating soon? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, what are you going to school for? I'm like, oh, philosophy. And they're like, philosophy? Yeah. What the hell are you going to do with a philosophy degree, right? And so, yeah. like, you know, that that thing comes up. And, mm-hmm. I'm, and I always, 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 when someone comes up with that, I always get this out of my control, instinct, not instinctual, I guess you could say, like, yeah, maybe instinctual. You get that gut punch? Yeah, yeah, I get that gut punch. And I'm like, oh, fuck, man. Like, here we go again. You know yeah, what I mean? But here's what you need to remember with that, is that 99 out of 100 people are living out their own plan Bs. Think about that, Mm -hmm. which means that 99 out of 100 people are going to come up to you with the same conversations that got passed down to them, which is, when are you graduating? What are you doing with that? What's your 401k with Mm -hmm. your job, with benefits, and a salary, and the fucking cheat? You're going to, oh, how is the salary? (laughs) Are you making a lot of money? Oh, you're making a lot of money? You must be happy. Like, 99% of people aren't you. They aren't like you. They can't relate to you, Mm -hmm. right? And so listening to them. And, and listening to their opinions on life and on and what they think will make you happy is going to lead you to a place that's going to be as happy as they are, which is 
Probably not that. Happy. Probably yeah, not yeah. that great. Yeah. Right. And so you have to keep that in mind. Like at the forefront of your mind, every single time that yep. conversation comes yep. up, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, oh, uh, are you graduating high school? Are you graduating college? What's your degree? What's your job lined up? What's this? What's this X Y Z path? that everybody else is following in the fucking rat race, right? Mm. All these sheep in America that everybody's following because that's what you're supposed to do because they fell for the parental and societal pressures yeah. that are put on you through just living in this country and yeah. living in most countries that yeah. are uh, that are well adapted. Yeah. And it's not the it not most of it in my opinion, I say this as a white male in, in a privileged society is is not due to the system. Yeah. Most of it's due to the psychological warfare going on inside your own brain that's, that was put there through other people, mm. right? And so you need to remember that when the 1% is not addressing you about these situations, you need to take it all with a grain of salt, mm. right? Because how often are those same people going to come up to you and say, does that make you happy? Never. Yeah. Never. Yeah. And if they're not going to give a fuck about you being happy and they're going to give a fuck about a job with benefits and a fat paycheck, why the fuck are you going to listen to them? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're not a part of the one percent. Mm. I'm not trying to sound like an elite or an, no, I'm in course. a cult, but yeah, like, yeah, it's the truth. If they're not coming from a place of happiness and fulfillment, why the fuck does their opinion matter anyways? They're yeah. coming from a place of, oh, I, I, I have an Audi now because I got a job. <laughs> oh, really? You hate ninety five percent of your life besides when you golf on the weekends with the boys and get drunk, yeah. like. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have to keep that in front of your mind. Like, yeah. it, it, and it's going to feel judgmental, and it is kind of putting yourself on a pedestal, but it's because you are on that pedestal. Mm. You're coming from a place of happiness and fulfillment. Your quality of your life is better. Yeah. There's a hierarchy there, mm. and you got to listen. Like, and granted, there's hierarchies here. Maybe he makes a lot more money than you. If he's not happier than you, then you got to decide whose opinions matter and whose doesn't, right? And so with that, it becomes a lot easier for you to be real with yourself. This is what I'm getting at. It's a lot easier for you to be real with yourself and real with them and start talking about the reality of your situation. Yeah. And when you do that, that's going to clear up everything so that you can finally actually get after and start to identify the things that you actually want in your life. Yeah, definitely, man. And yeah, 100%. That's that's. And I, I have gotten better at that. Like, I remember at first I would be like, oh, I'm a pre-business major. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck is a pre-business major? <laughs> and then so, like, as time went on and, like, I I, like, I always would hide um, this, even, like, with my YouTube channel. Like, I would never, never, be, like, be out public about it, right? And then I remember the first time, like, I went public when I was like, oh, my God. Like, crossing yeah. my legs. Like, I was like, oh, God, people are going to judge me. It's the conscious cast. The conscious cast. Too. Um, yeah, and I went out with it, and uh, it turned out that, like, no one judged me. No one cared. Um, and it was just, it's like this own type of inward barriers and masks that we put up. Um, and to be fair, it is outside our comfort zone, and it is um, something we're not used to. So we are going to get that type of immediate, uh, I guess you could say, discomfort or gut punch. But once you start, I've always said this, like the first time is the hardest time, right? Yeah. And so once you, once, sure. you, once you say it once, I remember when I first, I, I, I still get this gut punch when I tell people, um, at, like, so when I tell a person, like, I'm going to work for a nonprofit, it's a hell of a lot easier because it's more acceptable. Right. And so when I, as I, as compared to someone like, oh, I like videography, like it is still acceptable because people see it as like a legitimate career. Um, but when I say it, it's a lot, I get way more of a gut feeling as compared to that nonprofit. Right. Yeah. And so with that, I, I, I have been saying like, oh, I'm what do you do, Cal? Like, oh, I'm a waiter. I'm. A, I also work at the rec department here. I'm a videographer for them, right? And so, when I say I'm a waiter, way easier. When I say I'm a videographer for them, I, I still get a little bit of that gut punch, right? But it has slowly be getting easier and easier and easier, right? Until um, you you as an individual, I guess you could say, overcome that barrier. And I'm, I'm solely speaking from my own experience. Like when you yeah. when you overcome that barrier and you really, um, I guess you could say, relinquish those that mask, that barrier, that um, that what you've put on yourself or what society's put on you or what your family's put on you, I think that's really when you do see the growth. And of course, like I'm, this is a message to myself, right? Along with you speaking to me, you know, um, it's a message for me to do because like I am very much a person that has a hard time, um, I guess you could say embodying who I am, right? Because, you know, parents, you know, family, society is very much in that nine to five lane, right? Like, Okay. Going off that, um, so coming up, right, I'm we're about to graduate. Um, and then so I have that extended tuition into grad school, right? And so I like I could potentially like I want to hear your thoughts on this, right? Because mm -hmm. I think it's something I need to hear, and it's something that right now I'm leaning towards going to grad school, right? Going two more years and like possibly exploring another degree that I could possibly use towards 
a nonprofit, right? And I think I think there is a lot of value in that, and I think it would serve me a good amount, right? Serve you in what way? Serve me in terms of like being able to work in a nonprofit and make legitimate change in that nonprofit, like in terms of like the area I go into. So um, that's 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 what I do think of how it would serve me in terms of like intellectually as well too, and like yeah, okay. So and <laughs> off that, so I think um. Like, so with me not going to grad school, it's a big opportunity missed, right? Because grad school costs a lot of fucking money, right? Mm -hmm. But like, and I, I know, I know probably the angle you're going to take on this, right? So for me to like m miss grad school, it would be like, in my case, like, I feel like I'm missing it, kind of missing. Maybe because the, the situation's not, hasn't come up yet, but like, I feel like I'm missing a huge opportunity that maybe I should like venture into, you know? Mm -hmm. So... I don't know. You, what do you think I'm going to say? Probably like, well, it depends like how much, I think, I think you're going to take the angle of like, if it adds, like how much value does it add to your life? Right. If in like, in terms of like your values in terms of like how much you you'll benefit from it and progress and I guess happiness and like, and stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> so it, how much, how much value do you think going to grad school would give you? And what would you do otherwise? And are you being honest with yourself that you're actually f giving your 100% truth to what you want to do and doing that? Because if you're the type of person that wants to be a surgeon and you want to be a fucking brain surgeon because you want to save lives and you're set in stone and you feel that in your chest the same way I feel I want to be a life coach, of course you should go to grad school. Yeah. Of course, it's not a fucking question. That's like, it's a no brainer. It's like, and, and not for those people aren't even asking, should I go to grad school? Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're not. I'm not asking you. Do you think? I don't know. Do you think I should like put myself out there <laughs> for life coaching or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't know. Uh -huh. Like it's not. You're not gonna feel like that about it. Mm. It's not gonna be some. Um. Well, it's not. It's gonna be. I want to do this. Yeah. This is what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. It's not a conversation. Yeah. It's a conversation of this is what I'm doing. But if that's going to be, you also have to take into account the fact that, yes, it will give you the ability to have the sense of certainty and the, not have the gut punch when you have the conversation of, oh, I'm going to grad school to do this with a nonprofit, right? That's a part of it. Is that all of it? How much of it is it? Mm -hmm. I can't answer those questions for yeah. you, right? Yeah. Of course, there's going to be to an extent. But if it's not a part of your passion... If it's not as like as corny as that sounds, like if it's I got you. if you don't think that that's what you want to do for the long run, then you shouldn't do it, right? Yeah. If, if if you can have a guaranteed path, right? If I can fucking wave a wand and say, "Hey, Cal, right? Pick video editing, nonprofit, being the Gary V, or any of these paths that you're possibly even remotely interested in," and I'll wave the wand, and you'll be successful in that path. That's the one you need to choose. Right, and if that's not the nonprofit, then you shouldn't be doing it. With that said, if you don't actually know, right? Because this is a tricky situation. Yeah, I don't know. Right? I don't. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is you both? Yeah. Right. But if it gets to the point, so this is just a hypothetical of what I'm picking up, and I don't want to project. Right. No, no, it's okay. But I, I'm saying that to yeah. you be consciously aware. I don't yeah, want yeah. this to gotcha, project gotcha, into gotcha. you. Be like, well, Jay's thinking that, so maybe no, gotcha. no, 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 no. Okay. Right. Gotcha. So just, gotcha. Have this have a wall up a gotcha, little bit. Gotcha. Okay. Let's say, for example, you want to do video editing, right? You want to be the D Rock to a Gary V. Yep. And you want to try that out. And you said like you kind of figured out maybe some of the steps you need to take to try and get the ball rolling with that, right? And you start that as soon as you graduate or whatever. And you simultaneously are going to grad school for the nonprofit thing. But you find that you're spending so much time in grad school that it's taking away from video editing, which is what you want to do more of. That's when it has to stop. Yeah. You can't have anything sucking out the life of you that from the path that you know is the most meaningful and, and, and has the most purpose in it, even though you don't the video editing video editing thing doesn't have the the four hundred one K with the benefits and the security and the not gut punch when you talk to people, right? You, you, you gotta make sure you're being real and honest with yourself in that because if it is trickling and it is taking away, then you 
can't be doing that. But like for me, for a, a good example of it is like I work at Carbones, right, at the restaurant. And that doesn't take away from my ability to be a coach, my ability to do content, my ability yep. to do any of the things that I find meaningful. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. But if it started to do that, I don't care if I'm making zero dollars. I'll figure it out. I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. I'm not. There's nothing in anybody's power, at least that I can control, that I'm going to allow into my life that will take away from this. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Yeah. Right. And so you get that's. It's not a question for me. Yeah. But you got to think about that. And in the process, you're going to figure out what you like more, what you kind of like, what you don't like, mm-hmm. right? But it, the overarching idea is, A, be 100% honest with yourself and be 100% honest with other people, right? Not only will that make your life better, but the amount of people that are going to be like, that's fucking awesome. I'm so glad Cal said that because in my God, for the past fucking four years in college, I've been doing a fucking accounting degree and I don't want to fucking do it. And I'm so glad somebody like Cal can be yeah. honest and say that maybe he doesn't want to, he doesn't know what he wants to do with his philosophy degree and yeah. there's not some secure path for him or whatever. Like, yeah. And it feels great, right? You can be a model for somebody. Yeah, but yeah. Also, when you do that, you're going to figure out what it is that you do like to do yeah. and what it is that you don't like to do. It doesn't mean that you're going to be like, well, I started video editing and then I found out that I like to be the specific number three in Gary Vee's company. And that's yeah, what I yeah, am yeah. for life. Yeah, Ta-da! Yeah, yeah. Like, figure uh-huh. it out. Like, more, more, it's going to be more so the case that you're going to figure out, I like this, I don't like this. I'll move away from this. Yeah, and yeah. you'll move closer and closer to your truth like this. It's not going to be like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's good. A, 100% honesty, but B, don't let anything take away from the path that you, in the present moment, find most meaningful. Yeah. And that could be you find the nonprofit more meaningful than the editing. Pursue yeah. them both with everything yeah. you got. See what resonates with you more mm. and go with that with 100% and give anything that you have left over to the, your other passions. Yeah. That would be my that would be my best advice. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's like, I'm just like so unsure. You know, like there's like... It's like, I don't like, so how you were describing it, right? Like life coach, you feel in your gut, right? Like nothing's like, no matter what you're good. Like for me, that's like going to the gym, right? Like no matter what I'm going to the gym, like I'm going to find an hour to an hour and a half every single day to go to the gym. Right. And that, this is not to say this is what I want to do for my life, but like similar to you, like I don't, I don't necessarily feel that with like video editing or, um, nonprofit, obviously, um, and, like, I don't know, I think I have to do some exploring, completely, com- being completely honest with myself, right? Yeah. Like, really diving in uh, to myself and just, I don't know, just getting into different areas, but finding here's new the interests. Thing, is I didn't have that feeling like you just said with the gym. I didn't have that when I went from dental hygiene, to, well, I actually went from dental hygiene to physical therapy to then coaching. But, it, like, I didn't have that feeling when I first thought of coaching or when I first started getting into it a little bit. Okay. It wasn't like like a sense of certainty was washed over me, like, this is what I want to do. When that sense of certainty came to me was when I fully immersed myself in it. Not when I had the idea of doing it. Yeah. The feeling like, came when I was fully down for that path. When you see you could actually do it. Yeah, but but it was when I put all my eggs in that basket. Gotcha, gotcha. was when I f- decided I wanted to do it, right? Mm-hmm. And so in the same sense, where I don't think you'll know whether or not you that you actually want to do video editing or not until you go with it with everything you got. Yep. When it's not some wishy-washy, well, I'll do a little bit of the conscious cast. I'll do a little bit yeah. of philosophy. I'll do a little bit of nonprofit. Yeah. I'll do a little bit of this. And maybe I'll try a new video editing and see yeah. if I can pursue it a little bit here. Yeah. That's not where you're going to figure that. For, in my eyes, you're not going to figure out if that's what you want to do. Oh, yeah. 100%. Personally. I agree. So I think whatever it is that you do, put all your eggs in that basket. Yeah. Do you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, because I'm, I'm trying to juggle a whole bunch of things right now right, that aren't necessarily related to one thing. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm definitely benefiting... Um, from philosophy in terms of like my of critical thinking skills, my abstract, like it's definitely benefiting me and relating to like, you know, this self growth, self improvement type of thing, um, that we're doing here. Um, but yeah, I see a hundred percent what you're saying. Like I'm trying to juggle a whole bunch of things and like, you know, Ralph smart really says it best. He's like, I'm paraphrasing here. He's like those who, um, are trying to focus on a bunch of different things, right? Their focus is, um, like disoriented in a bunch of different areas. But for someone who's, you know, I guess you could say life coach, you know, like has, has like, has their goals figured out, right. Knows what they're doing is self-aware and they have their priorities straight. They're going to be a hell of a lot more successful in terms of where they're going. Right. As compared to someone who is, you know, scrambling, trying to balance a whole bunch of things because I'll be going from a philosophy paper to video editing, to a communication assignment, to a business assignment. Like spread too thin. 
I'm I'm all <laughs> I'm like I'm as thin as it gets, right? Yeah. But like, and I think it's something I really got to dive into, and it's something I really got to consider after this next semester. It, like in, in terms of like making the decision. Like, of course, I'm gonna think up until that yeah. point. Like, and I think I will be able to develop, I guess, a plan, a goal, you know, and stuff like that. Like what I really want to do, yeah, yeah, yeah. and. I'm obviously very much progressing as an editor, I feel, um, yeah. making a lot of strides in videography, really taking this seriously, you know, mm -hmm. and seeing how I can develop, you know, as an individual um, in terms of my life, you know, in terms of success, you know, using, and I am, I, dude, I, I can't tell you how appreciative I am <laughs> of, like, having an individual in your life and, like, please watch this, all right? Watch what I'm about to say here, all right? I really appreciate you, man, of course, S like, challenging me when it comes to just different viewpoints, asking me questions about um, things in order to improve my life. Because I feel I have, like, no one in my life that really does that, right? I always look to other people, and I always – I'm always, like, I'm always checking in on them. Like, yeah. I'm always I'm always asking how they're doing, right? I'm always yeah. picking them up, right? And, and yeah. obviously, this is a relative subjective thing, but, like, no one really ever does that for me, right? Like, no one ever really ever pushes me to – figure out my goals, figure out my path, right? Where I'm going. They're always worried about themselves. And I think that's a big quality with you, man. And like, that's why you're going to be, you already are such a great life coach and you're going to be an even better one in the future. You know what I mean? Appreciate it, um, and so like having a friend, having a, maybe a family member or relationship partner in your life that can push you to be better, right? And can, you know, check in on you and is monitoring someone else besides themselves. And this is something I got to improve on in my own life is a valuable ass trait. And I think it's one of the most valuable traits when it comes to relationships. So I appreciate it. Of course, bro. Thanks, bro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that has been episode 44 of the Conscious Cast. I'm your host, Cal, along with my other boy, Mr. Jason Scaloro. Where can they find you, my man? They can find me at Jason Sclora, J A S O N S C A L O R A, on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. <laughs> and, yes, sir. And the Jason Sclora. Yes, sir. 100%. Yes, sir. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the Jason Sclora Show on Spotify and YouTube. Big episodes coming out on there, so make sure you guys tune in. All right, guys. We're out of here. Love yourself because I love you. Stay handsome. Peace. <laughs> that was good, man.